coming to you live from downtown Detroit. This is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel O'Connor. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this Friday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Got a big, big surprise for you folks. Joel Conan back with us today. Joel, welcome back. Thank you. Glad to be back at uh, Benzinga World Headquarters. All right, so I'm joined by Joel Conan and Dennis Dick, and we're going to have a lot to cover today, so let's jump right in. we got some earnings. we got some news from after the bell, and we got two guests for you on the docket. First up at a is Ivan Feinseth. He's a partner and CIO at Tigers Financial Partners. Uh, Ivan covers... Uh, SWKS uh, a lot, and they reported last night, so we're going to talk to him about that, and it pretty much covers the entire uh, market, every sector you can think of, so we'll talk to him about, about earnings season, and then at 835, we're joined by Fari Hamzi, founder of Hamzi Analytics. Joel, how's it doing in the markets? Uh, S&P's only traded down a half a point here, made a new all-time high yesterday at 76 and a quarter, pre-market high, just a buck from that, 75 and a quarter, so we'll keep an eye on that, target on the upside. Crude oil futures in the red here by 40 cents at 46.50. Looks like we had a little rally in the crude market. Uh, we'll see if that can continue. And gold back up at 12.50, 12.48, 80s last print, up 3.20. Uh, found support, couldn't quite get to 1,200. Now back up at 12.50. Dennis, man, we got a lot to talk about this morning. Uh, I know you want to start with uh, your favorite stock, Dry Ships. I do. And you were going to ban it from the show, and I said, no, we can't ban Dry Ships from the show. It's just too much fun to talk about. So just another normal day here in Dry Ships land. Stock trading down 46% after another reverse split, one for seven this time. So if you are keeping score here, the adjusted close, the Dry Ships closed yesterday 43 cents the adjusted close because it went one for seven is 301 wow they hit it already this morning it's already down 47 percent just because they hate the stock straight at 695,000 share locates are tough on this one if you got locates i guess people are using them because the stock's already down 46 percent in the pre-market and what is the all-time high now on dry ships joel 212 million <laughs> this is called 212 million 300 no no i want to know all the numbers 212 million. Uh, you know what? I was going to say that I couldn't ban it from the show, but I could ban it from doing levels on it. This will be the last level I ever give on dry ships. The all time yeah. high is 212,000. Yeah. 212,372,690. Actually, the level's in the pennies because it always reverse splits off of that. But, anyways. The slow leak to zero continues forever in this stock. If you buy it, this is a license to burn cash. I mean, basically, you're flushing cash down the toilet every time it seems like you buy this. It will have bounces. There will be traders that will make money day trading this. It seems like if you hold this thing any longer than a few days now, it used to be a few months. It seems like you hold it any longer than a few days, you get burned, though. So, I mean, the person that bought it just a month ago here at, I'm just going to the charts, at $10 because it's obvious reverse split here now, it's already down 90%. So it's just a cool way. And if you bought it yesterday just because you thought, oh, maybe they'll open it up a little higher, you're already down 47% here again. So buying this thing is just toxic. Long run, short run, there's going to be bounces, there's going to be trades. But this thing, it basically just goes up because of short squeezes. Why do they, uh, and still, I will ask this question every time they do it, why do they let them do this? I just... Well, I, there's, they have no other way to get financing. Remember, we had Jeff Goldman, who was excellent when he came on and explained it to us. It's the death <coughs> spiral financing. There's no way else to get it. They have to, you know, basically the death spiral financing. I tried to explain it, but I can't explain it nearly as good as Jeff. But there's dead hold. They, they sell the the stock at a discounted or they sell options to buy the stock at a discounted price so basically the debt holder the debt which is converted it can be converted at a discounted price those get converted by the debt holders and then they stock you know obviously they're selling the stock short because they know they're going to convert to cover their shorts and then that you know hits the stock down 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 stock was under a buck and they reverse split it again so all you're seeing is money go from the people who are lucky enough to be able to participate and there's probably some people getting rich off of being short this thing and also being able to buy the stock at a discounted price at the expense of the poor people who are buying the stock thinking it's going to come back 
$212 million, $372,690. It is not coming back, folks. Never, never, never. Lucky. Well, I'm not even going to comment on where it's going to go because it just continues to leak down to zero. Never going to go to zero, though, because they're going to keep reverse flooding it. Eventually, they're going to make them stop. You would think so. There was a lawsuit they were trying to uh, get it to stop, and they just shrugged that off, and they reverse flooded again. So I don't know how they make it, make them stop. That's the whole issue. All right. Doc. That's financing. Give it a Google. All it's right. not good. It's not good news. A uh, quick question here from B. Trudell. Uh, we have a downgrade of Johnson & Johnson by BTIG Research. What's up with that? Well, they don't know what they're doing because why would you ever downgrade a stock in this market, Dennis? <laughs> this market goes straight up. Anyways, Johnson Johnson reported earnings yesterday. I don't know what they're profit-taking. I don't know what they're doing. They're sell rating. The dreaded sell rating of BTIG. Atlantic also downgrading the stock here this morning. Um, Johnson and Johnson. So you got a couple downgrades after the earnings report. Stock was at an all-time high uh, just yesterday, right below the 137 area, 137.08. I believe that actually, yeah, that was an all-time oh, high. Yeah. Just kissed. So it's downgrading all-time highs. We know how to buy the dip works. So who knows? It could just come right back. But you got the double downgrade today. One is to a sell rating, so it could put a little bit of pressure on the stock early. Uh, down a buck fourteen, only on fourteen hundred shares have traded this morning. Uh, man, big run up. I don't know why this thing go from one thirty one to one thirty seven, or do I really need a reason for that? Uh, stock had a great three days. You can pick your daily lows up here. We're actually below yesterday's low, but I'd keep an eye on the two day low. It's not even a gap area. You haven't seen thirty four fifty two yet, so that's my that's a target on the downside. A buck away. One thirty four fifty two is your two day low. Let's jump over to the earnings parade here. There was a lot of them, but we got to start start with a big gun from last night. That was Microsoft. Microsoft bouncing all over the place. It actually got a good lift on the earnings report. Then they came out in the conference call, and the guidance wasn't that great, and they hit the stock. So the pop and the drop for Microsoft. Spencer, give us the details. 98 cents for 71 cents on the EPS, adjusted EPS. Sales of 24.7 versus $24.27 billion. So a beat on the sales and a beat on the EPS. But like you said, not great guidance. And stock trading down just slightly here in the pre-market. Where did we get up to there, Joe? Because I saw 75s trading last night, over 75. I saw, I, 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 I'm not making it up, but you did get a 77.24 print. No. Did you? Yeah. Yep. That had to be real. On the first bar, maybe right after the earnings? Uh, I didn't actually, notice the trade that high. Uh, actually, no. Uh, well, what time did they report? Cause this, uh, right after 4 o'clock. It came up pretty quick. Ah uh, no, it kept it kept going. Seventy six sixty five was your high in the initial bar. Then you hit seventy seven twenty four wow. before breaking down all the way to seventy two and a half. But man, oh man, I mean maybe it is due for a down day because if you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight out of nine up days here, so a lot of room. I mean the pre market low was just above seventy two fifty. That's not too far away, but it's actually trading at 73.80. One number. Man, it's hard when you haven't looked at these charts in a while. All-time closing high from yesterday, 74.22. That's only 42 cents away. I'd keep an eye on that as a target and see if you get any paper building at, uh, you know, 74, 74 and a half, 75. Really hard. I don't think we'll see that uh, all time or that pre market high is seventy seven twenty four. No, I think that's safe as well. And the stock's trained down now because of the guidance. So I think that's safe, Joel. That's uh, been an incredible run up here wow. for the last week and a half, though, from sixty eight to seventy four twenty two. And then the after hours run, I had no got over seventy seven bucks. I mean, you got to watch chasing these things. Because, one, when they haven't announced the guidance, and stuff happens on the conference calls, too. I mean, a lot of people say, okay, well, 4 o'clock, the earnings event's over. I'm safe now. That conference call comes out. A lot of times you see stocks do some funny things because all it takes is a CEO to say something good or bad, and the stock can really move the opposite direction there. So sometimes they're worth listening to. I mean, four out of five times listen to the conference call, nothing's going to happen. But one out of five, you're going to get a Microsoft where they're going to say something the market doesn't like, and they're going to get a reversal. So it's sometimes worth listening to. All right, down 40 cents here. It's 73.78. Okay, so we've had eBay, Visa, Skyworks. We had GE this morning, Schlumberger. 
Uh, did we get Honeywell? I think we, you know, we're, we're due for Honeywell if we haven't got it yet. But where do you want to go? Because we can go anywhere here. Well, let's wait for Skyworks until Ivan comes on because <clears throat> Ivan uh, follows that stock closely. So let's do eBay right now. eBay. Go to eBay. eBay reported, reported last night. Yep. 45 cents is in line with the estimate for the EPS sales of 2.3 versus 2.31 billion dollar estimates. So pretty much in line there as far as Q2 goes. As far as Q3, uh, EPS coming in at the low end of the range, sales coming in um, higher than the estimate, and the fiscal year guidance is uh, in line as well. So everything pretty much in line. Same story here. Stock ran up into the report. I mean, we, there's this theme going on here, and the theme is we've been talking about it for the entire earnings season, is that the stocks have run up a lot into the report, seem to get hit when they turn, or they seem to get hit pretty quickly there when um, they, re, you know, they only report in line or they report just a little a bit of a beat. They've got to blow it away. And you know, eBay ran up over 10% the last week and a half into the report. So not surprising that's given some back this morning when they don't blow it away. Wow, what a range in this thing! Uh, pre-market range uh, had to pop over 37.50. Uh, your pre-market high 37.75. Whew, within 15 minutes, you were back under here at 34, 32 low. Now, just kind of hanging out here at the 35, 50 area. I mean, basis the daily charts here. I see that low under 35. I would see if, uh, you know, we could get to that. That would be your four or five day low right under $35. That comes in right by a whole number, 34.89. It did get through there in the pre-market, but I think I would use that as a first target on the downside. Below that, you have a big bar into the 34.30 handle. Coming back up on the upside, all-time closing high, 37.18, buck and a half away from there. Let's see if you get sellers even at 37 even uh, now that you trade it down under 35 bucks. The other big report from last night was Visa, symbol V. Spencer, give us those results. Q3 EPS, 86 cents versus an 81 cent estimate. Sales of 4.6 versus $4.36 billion, so a good Q3 there. They also reaffirmed their outlook for the fiscal year, and they see sales growth at around 20%. Stock out the pump just under. I was sitting up there trying to short at the big 100 psychological oh. level. I was in the 99.90s. I don't think we quite got there because I never got filled, Joel. What was the high after hours? Pre-market high, 99.89. Ow! Oh, and I'm in the 90s. So they pennied me. They pennied me. And that basically means they played, traded a penny under my, op my offer. So I didn't know I even got that. I'm pretty sure I was, I was, I think it was 95. So I got nickeled, basically. Anyways, did not get filled on it. I guess I should have went in the 80s and should have known everybody else was going in the 90s. On the spike up, I figured the 100 psychological was going to hold, and I was playing the theme that I've been playing the whole time. Ran up into the earnings report, so um, they're going to need to blow it away to go higher. It is going higher, but just not over 100, which is a huge psychological level. Yeah, and you're going to get a play uh, yesterday's high, 99.14. That was your all-time high, 98.11. Just shy of your all-time closing high. So let's see what happens in the 99 handle. And then also, if you start to break down under 98, poof, yesterday's low, 97, 93. But hanging up here at 99, no one's really whacking it. So we have a chance to uh, try uh, triple digits. I think this one, you're going to find out off the open whether someone's going to make a stand and buy here at 99 or sellers are going to reemerge. All right, <clears throat> eight fourteen. It's gonna take a quick break, and we'll grab. <clears throat> Man, I can't talk today. Ivan Feinseth of uh, Tigris Financial Partners. So we'll be right back with Mister.
one. And welcome back everyone to Vincent's Free Market Prep. I'm Spencer Israel here with Joel Elkanen and Dennis Dick. We're on the line once again with Ivan Feinseth of Tigris Financial Partners. Ivan, how's it going today? Very good. It's a good Friday morning in the summer. Yeah, that it is. We wanted to get you on because I wanted to ask you about Skywork Solutions, SWKS. They reported yesterday after the bell. I'll read the numbers uh, real quick for our, our listeners. Q3 adjusted EPS of a buck 57 versus a buck 52. So they beat on that. They beat on the sales as well. 900 versus 890 million dollars. They're raising their dividend uh, from 28 cents to 32 cents a share, and their guidance came in higher as well. And yet get the stock after the bell or after hours Ivan what happened well first the stock did run up uh, into the earnings about uh, four or five dollars over the past few days prior to the announcement so be it's the old adage of buy on the rumor sell on the news but uh, stocks a number of stocks that have reported great results have sold off after the results and I think any weakness in the stock would be a significant buying opportunity. I think the stock will go higher. Uh, their business is very strong, and they are evolving from just a cell phone connectivity enabler to an enabler of connectivity in the Internet of Things, which very importantly will it does include the connected car. So uh, all things that connect wirelessly, which is going to be pretty much all things, from home control to home uh, to home security to the connected car to connected devices and Skyworks is going to play a role in that. Can, can you elaborate on that uh, real quick? So what exactly will be will Skyworks's role be in this future? Well, they make uh, chips that enable connect wireless connectivity and, and everything that uh, interacts with everything else will connect wirelessly, whether it's Wi-Fi or on a 4G and soon to be 5G wireless networks, satellite connectivity, so anything that uses wireless connectivity. And as we evolve into what will become the self-driving car, uh, you need a constant transmission and feedback of data, of the geospatial data to where everything is. That's going to be important just to uh, the, the uh, location-based advertising, which is also going to be integrated in automobile infotainment systems and on cell phones and connected devices. So again, anything that connects wirelessly, Skyworks can help enable that. Do you, do you have an opinion on where the stock is uh, right now or, or any uh, price tar tar targets? Well, we don't use price targets, but I see right now in the pre-market is trading about 105. We have an intrinsic value calculation that's at 132, so the stock really should be trading in the you know higher based on that right now. But over time, because of their strong return on capital, what we look at, is economic profit, which is return on capital minus cost of capital. They have a return on capital of almost 29% versus a cost of just under 10. So that spread can compound share of the value creation. And that's the significant driver of future uh, of future shareholder value creation. All right. I, I got to ask you about Chipotle now. Uh, this, this, is, this has had quite the week. Uh, I know you cover this stock. Uh, wh what are your impressions of, of the stock's movement to, based on the news this week? Well, first of all, they offer um, organic and, and you know, non-herbicide, non-pesticide uh, farmed products. And when you are farming organically, you use manure for fertilizer, which, you know, unless uh, the vegetables are washed very well, if they're not cooked, you have um, the possibility of some kind of contamination. That's, that's the basic problem. Um, and unfortunately, in some way, in the preparation process, they have had issues. And while they do serve, you know, millions of people and millions of meals every day. I mean, one issue becomes a problem. They seem to have a problem in that process. And when you've had a few problems now, it counts itself, especially in a consumer product that um, you know has a lot of consumer awareness and a company that trades it to be a multiple. So, um, and is it an competitive business? So while they do produce a quality product and as they start to have issues, consumers may have start to avoid it and when you have a company that trades at a premium multiple there's a risk to the share price and that's what we're that's what we saw before and that's you know we've we've seen over the past few days 
uh, looking over the past couple of months, the stock's down to you know about one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, are are you buying this dip or what? No, we have a neutral rating on the company, and we have had for some time because of the valuation of the company. So um, while the other process issues are now an issue, uh, that's uh, and compounding it on top of the valuation. Are you worried at all about uh, the upcoming quarter, or I guess the current quarter, and then I guess the the next earnings report, and uh, and like a windfall from you know this week's news uh, showing in the earnings report for next uh, next quarter? Well, I don't think it would. This what would happen would be in the next re- earnings report. I think it'll be in the guidance, and again, when they start to have issues that they need to address, they tend to lower guidance to, you know, so they can somehow address the pro- the problem, which may mean you know additional incremental costs. And while they are you know slightly pre-priced, you know they they have probably they are you know the quick casual, which is a lower cost provider, in, you know part of the food service industry. But um, you know if they have margin pressure or have co- you know uh, input costs problems, uh, that will be a problem going forward. So I think that would be more in the guidance than the actual results for the recent quarter. Looking at at a higher level, Ivan, you cover a, a lot of different uh, sectors and industries. What is your overall impression of the earnings of earnings season uh, so far? We're only about you know a week or so into it, into the meat of it at least. What's your impression of the overall earnings season, and, and what do you expect for the, the next you know four or five six weeks? Uh, I it has been very strong so far, and I think it will continue. Uh, I mean, I focus on basically consumer product, consumer service, which includes technology because technology is a big driver of the economy and the market. I think uh, next week, Google's numbers will be good. Facebook will be good. So these companies that um, are disruptors, they are problem solvers, they are paradigm shifters, they have tremendous momentum. And I think that that will continue. Uh, and I, one thing, you know, I was thinking about he- heading into this this earnings season is what's going to be the driver, right? So obviously, tech has been the driver for the first six months. Uh, the banks didn't really do it, do anything for me. Uh, do you, Do you think tech will continue to be the driver going forward? Market. Absolutely, because we have a tremendous amount of innovation. We have a number of emerging trends that are continuing to expand. Uh, I mean, cloud migration and and hybrid cloud, those are powerful enterprise trends. Uh, The wearable market, I am very bullish on the wearable market, especially more sophisticated high-end wearables. I mean, companies making cheaper wearables. It was interesting that one of the first fitness tracker wearables, Jawbone, just filed bankruptcy. However, there's more and more demand for more sophisticated wearables like the Garmin Phoenix line, which is a very high priced, but very sophisticated and ro- feature robust wearable sells well. The Apple I, Apple I watch is selling well. So you're going to see wearables continue to incorporate new features that will be breakthrough features. Google is working on a contact lens that can real-time monitor the level of glucose in your tears so diabetics won't have to prick their finger every day or every hour a few hours to test blood you're going to see that there's t-shirts that will include indication indicators to measure the level of lactic acid in your sweat Uh, you could have a t-shirt and you know like wrist bands and socks that could do real-time ekgs measure blood pressure and of course and you're going to see a lot of wearable technology that will be very industry specific, especially for healthcare. So I think that, uh, and then the again the connectivity to be able to broadcast uh, this information in real time. Again, uh, an opportunity for Skyworks. So I think all of these trends and these changes and n- new technologies are what will continue to drive the tech sector and the overall economy. Uh, question, Ivan, and I'll let you go. Do you still cover Herbalife, and what are your thoughts on, on this rally it's been on for the past uh, you know, s- seven months or so? Uh, yes, I do still cover Herbalife. We have an eye on it. I think they have, an interest, they have a, a good product line. They have an interesting business model. 
while uh, direct marketing, multi-level marketing is somewhat controversial, it's a process that's been around for 100 years. And Herbalife has been a very successful company for over 36 years. And now that the overhang of controversy uh, has been resolved and they have made some adjustments, they paid a small fine, they have changed some of their um, marketing focus, uh, I think that the trend will be positive. This is company has been a profitable company for every year for the 14 years it's been public except for one. They had a small loss in 14 years. And they've been around for th uh, 30, this is the 37th year. All right. Ivan Feinseth, Tigrace Financial Partners. Ivan, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. All right. Back to the market, guys. What do we got going on? Uh, not a lot of earnings stocks here too. Um, Jar wanted to know about NCR. Did this one report? I believe it did. I, I believe so. It did. They reported uh, yesterday Q2 adjusted EPS of 80 cents. That's a four cent beat. Sales of 1.59 versus 1.61 billion dollars. So it was just a slight miss on mm. the sales number for NCR. What do you think of this one, Joel? Ah, uh, they pounded it, and it's on its way back here. Pre-market low of 39.56, but boy, oh boy, what a nice run up ahead of it from under 39 up to 43 bucks. So you're going to have a lot of folks underwater. To me, just under that $40, that $40 psychological level, we're only trading at 40.13. Got a couple lows to contend with, 39.65 and 39.07. I think you're going to have a lot of overhead supply now falling three bucks off that report. Gonna have some underneath demand too, though. I think the 38 to 39, 40 area, it looks like some support down there too. So get below 40, like you're saying. There's lots of lows in the 39, lots of accumulation in the last month or two. I think it's got some support, 38 to 39, uh, 40 maybe a little bit early for me. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends <laughs> if you're, you know, trying to reel in a short here, you know, that you're underwater, basically yeah. from 39 to 43. Do you, you know, you use this opportunity. If you're waiting to start a new long in the issue, I think you can wait. It just depends if you know if you want to book some profits here from a short. I don't know. If you, can you wait for anything when you were trying to start longs, Joel, this market? Uh, not, I mean, <laughs> Unless every, it's AT&T. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's going on with AT&T? It bounced yesterday. You want to know what the catalyst was, the kickstart AT&T? No. Fast money. All four traders on Fast Money were loving AT&T. They liked the dividend, and it popped like 20 cents on, on that Fast Money from two nights ago and just followed through, and both of them, AT&T and Verizon, both took off too. I think it was. I think it was kind of the catalyst. It's uh, unbelievable the push those guys have. Two lows under 36, so if you were using that whole number, which also acted as pretty good support, uh, back in October of last year, it uh, got a nice pop. We'll see what happens. 36.52 is the close. I don't know. That's a big pop. And then, Dennis, did you get any, get any of it on that pop? Or you? I bought some Verizon at the open. So I did not trade the at t but I was trading the Verizon. Verizon had a bigger pop, actually. Really nice lift here. They're both showing life here now. I'm still not. I'm long in at t my invest portfolio, not long Verizon my invest portfolio. I know the at t yield says 6.88%. That's not right. It's in the fives. So I'm not sure why that's off today. Maybe it's not off on your system, but 5% dividends on these things. You know, I kind of do like them. I've talked about them for a while. I think, you know, eventually these things are going to bounce back. I don't think interest rates are flying high here in the future. There's a lot of stocks to talk about here, Joe. We do have option expiration here as well, so we're going to get the imbalances here in 30 seconds. They're always interesting on option expiration days, although you have to take them with a grain of salt because so many institutional players jockey their option positions against the stocks. Uh, but one stock we didn't talk about, Ace did mention it. I was talking about it last night. Amazon. Amazon had a wild ride after hours. And if you come in here this morning, you're like, oh, just quiet a little day. Amazon's down 0.5% or down five points. Man, it was a wild ride, though, because a headline broke from Reuters about an FTC probe, and they smacked the hell out of it on that headline. Then digging in, I guess it wasn't that big of a deal. But Spencer, what was the headline for Amazon? Yeah, so anytime you're involved in a big merger or acquisition, the FTC obviously jumps in and, and reviews it. And as part of that review, they're looking into allegations that Amazon uh, misleads its customers about pricing uh, discounts. 
So this is uh, discounting, not accounting, just discounting, which is not as big a deal. But a, a, a consumer watchdog analysis found that in 61% of Amazon's products that have reference prices, they were higher than uh, what had been sold, than the same product had been sold in the previous 90 days, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, so in 61% of, of the products that have consumer that have comparable prices, um, they those prices were higher than what than than the price the product had been sold at 90 days prior. Amazon said it, the study was deeply flawed. Deeply flawed were, were their words. So I don't know. Talk about that price action, Joel. After hours when this information came out, this thing went in free fall. Yeah, I uh, made a low print at 1006. People are probably holding out for the uh, $1,000 level. Now bouncing back, so I think you had a little bit of an overreaction there. Uh, just keeping an eye on the levels from yesterday. Uh, you had your old time closing high at 102870, so only 7 bucks away from that. Yesterday's low, I, I like 22.50 on the up, on the, if you start to go into rally mode here, because that was an old double bottom from Thursday and Friday. So we get above 22.50, maybe look for that close. Coming back on the downside, you can see basis of daily charts. There's not much in here as they whacked it down under that double bottom in 22.50. So be hard to pick a, uh, a good level on the downside. Uh, wow, this thing is pretty pretty technical, though. If I really was holding out for a target, double another double bottom at one double one thousand three eighty one and one hundred four. So a couple double bottoms there on Amazon. You got some support down at a thousand bucks. Oh, of course, cycle. I finally broke out of there. What was that uh, three days ago? So that was a psychological level. I don't think we're going to see it again today. A couple more quick earnings stocks, then we'll get to a couple stocks in the chat. We have not talked about General Electric here yet. It's funny, you know, 30 minutes into a show, GE hasn't even got or mentioned here yet. Uh, stocks have been bouncing around. It reported earnings here this morning. Been getting hate from everyone, really, you know, for a while here now. You know, Deutsche Bank hating the most, saying that they could cut the dividend. Other people saying the dividend's safe, 3.63% dividend on it. I still own it in my investment portfolio. Give us the details, Spencer, from the report. $0.28 cents versus $0.25. Cents. Sales of $29.56 versus $29.02 billion. So good on the sales, good on the EPS. And stock bounced, and then it dropped, and now it's still dropping. Joel, tell us about the after or the pre-market action. Uh, you got over $27, and I think I would have probably taken some neat to heat there because uh, there had been three highs right at 27 even. A very quick pop up to 27 and a quarter, now back under 27. So I keep an eye on that. No major run until you can get back above there. Now you're getting a shot here at the 2650 area. I see uh, one low, 26.37, and maybe hold out for the whole numbers here. Under 26, uh, two lows at 5.85 and 5.91. So I'm looking at GE. I'm looking at Verizon. I'm looking at AT&T. Uh, AT you know, your big, big cap stocks trade a lot of volume at the whole numbers. And actually, the low of the moves on all three within 15, 20 cents, a whole numbers here, the 26 level will – have much significance if it can get down there today. 1.2 million shares have traded already. Downward Dog wants to know about KAR, not a company that I follow, car auction services here, but we can do a technical on anything. It's only traded 21 shares in the pre-market. Not sure if there's news on this puppy or not, but KAR, Joel, give us a quick technical thoughts. Quick technical thoughts here on KAR. Resistance up at 42 here. I see that as a high that you had back uh, earlier in July. Coming back on the downside here. Nice three-day run. So if you were going from mm -hmm. the one-day rally, two-day rally, three-day rally, looks good. Target on the upside, as I said, would be uh, 42.03. Your July 5th high coming back on the downside. I think you're going to have uh, a lot of people missing this thing under 41. Yesterday's low, 134. After that, I'd be looking for the trio of lows at the 4050 area from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. 835. 835. That means it's time for uh, Mr. Fari Hamzi. So we'll be right back and grab Fari, Fari with you. Watch and... Commander. All right. That's your bet. You're sticking to it. Are we going live? Are we bringing mm. them live? Wow. Uh, well, you know what? Yeah. Bring them live? All right. I guess let's bring them live. I wasn't going to. Let's gonna, bring them but... live. I'm um, saying watch. What's okay. the bets? We haven't had Fari on in so long. Watch Commander. Kneecap. What are the other ones he's got? Kneecap. 
Kneecap. Go with Watch Commander. Brent's going with Hello. Let's see. Oh, that throws us right out when he says that one. He's He has been on for a while. He's going to say Watch Commander. Commander. Yeah! I called it. I called it. I, called it. I know you, Furry. I was like, he's going with Watch Commander. He's going with Watch Commander. I'm right again. Furry. Where are you guys have you been? I know. Where have we been? We've been missing yeah. you, Furry. We've been missing you, buddy. How's it going? Same here. Oh, How's just, it going? Just crazy. Absolutely nuts. Uh, Absolutely. Just, uh, Everything's nuts. Firing, firing and all cylinders. Brad Sullivan joined us uh, as a part of a management team. And, uh, oh, geez. Just too much going on. It may not be on the air very long. Based what? on some of the stuff we're doing, I probably have to... Under the radar, so. There's a lot of earnings reports there to, di- to, 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 to digest there, Furry. What are you trading? Well, talk, talk to us, bro. Uh, what are you in right now? I'll, I'll tell you what we have done. We have not done too well. We have not done. But I think we've been a little bit too cautious, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we did really well with Netflix. Okay. But I, I posted a trade uh, on, 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 the, on the Twitter. But we were in uh, Delta Airlines, JPM, uh, uh, Citigroup. We have, we have had some uh, VIX trades, uh, American Express, Visa, uh, again, another C group modified, and also we're in SLD. SLD what? just came out, actually surprised me. Um, that was quite, kind of a more of a chart pattern. Um, surprised a lot by the AXP. You know, business travel is up. It, it hits our targets in the afternoon, but then again, we all know what matters the next day. At exit time, you know. But so we buy a little bit forward, a couple of days more, maybe, I mean, one week more, so we're not pushed to get out that day and have a little bit of time, maybe, but I'm not Nothing Murray, too what are crazy. I mean, I've been, I've been too active on NQ. Actually, I've traded NQ more than anything else in the last uh, six years, which is a startling for my chat room. They're just saying, what? What are we doing here? Uh, there's been so little moving uh, yes, you know. Well, what are your thoughts on the VIX? I mean, I mean, we're 10, we're well under 10 here now. We're trading 962. I mean, these are like ridiculous yeah, yeah, yeah. lows here. Nobody's yeah, worried about it. Wake me up when it's over. Exactly. It, it's it's horrible. As a trader, I want to see volatility yeah. well, we're, here. We're doing, some, we're doing some VXX calls and puts. Yeah. We've been strategic. One of the guys with Brad that ran his um, VIX uh, uh, desk, at uh, the big hedge fund he used to run with uh, ABF Man. Um, he, he, he's one of my guys for a num- number of years now, and I asked him to give me some, you know, some trades that he thinks good on the ball. Because he and his brother, they call, look at the Thompson twins. Uh, the, the last names are Thompson. Very smart guys, really understand VIX. And uh, so we, this time he suggested we do a VX. And, uh, but we have to, here's the thing. With VIX, you have to repair it. You cannot put a VIX trade on and go away and say, here's my target, here's my stop, I'm going to be good, not worry about it. No, no, no. This is an animal. You have to adjust it. You have to plan on a couple of repairs. If you don't do that, there's no straight shoot. It's really erratic times. Um, just to look at what you call it. Look at the oil VIX, OVX. You go yeah. there, you really, yeah, you got to b- 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 pull, pull, pull hairs. Uh, from yourself, saying, what, what did I do this for? Um, so we have done VXX, and we have done VIX options. Uh, no VIX futures. As you know, I, I'm a big student of VIX futures. I use that for timing, but uh, I'm too small to trade VIX futures. You know? Brad does. Brad does. But he's, a, he's a monster. I'm just a small guy. Okay, give us your thoughts. We had Microsoft report last night. Did you play Microsoft report, and what are your thoughts or after it? Um, I don't know if we got a feel. We chased it, but we were very bullish on it. Uh, what I see this morning is not all that good, I guess. Um, I do believe fundamentally. I'm very proud of their management team because I know a couple of guys there. Scott Guthrie is one of them. Um, these guys have really, really turned around the company. They're really executing. And that was a monster, monster return. Um, but I, I, the, the, the market right now, as of now, is not favorable. Uh, we may go back in and into it. We just didn't get filled. We chased it. We chased it a couple of times during the day. Of course, you know, Thursdays are, in, in, as you know, Thursdays in expiration uh, by a month. 
Night's special trade. Earnings month. In the earnings month, the first month of the quarter. Thursdays are a very busy day. You know, like next week, you have Amazon, Google, da da da. Some of these ministers are sitting there that you have to deal with. So there's so much you can change when you're trading for yourself and a bunch of people on an uh, email or Twitter base. Because you have to inform them. And you have to, it takes a propagation delay. You have to be cautious. You just can't be a cowboy. It's one thing to trade for yourself. You pull the trigger or for fun. But when you're doing it for a group uh, on email or Twitter, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time, reaction time. You see the reaction when people can get in. Some people don't get in, so you have to adjust the price. And then you run away right before they, if you look at it, you'll see like the plot of 10 minutes or 15 minutes right before their announcement is ran up. And we were not in. We chased it a little bit, but let it go. And then it exploded, of course. We're on now, the line. Uh, it's, it's a little bit down. We're on yes, the line so, with Fari Han, founder of Hamzi Analytics. Uh, brings us well knowledge and aggressive equity options and index futures trends. Fari, I got a question for you. I was, I was out last week, but I saw a tweet of yours before I left. And you said, yes, you know, you remain bullish that you're not, you're yes. not fighting the trend, but right. you know, you're ready to hop on this thing on the short side. So you're showing that, you know, that constraint here in the market. And uh, I'm looking at chart here. Is it going to be something technically? Is it going to be something fundamentally? Is it going to be, uh, um, you know, I, I think of, more or less has to do with Don Grampino. Because we call him Don, not as Donald, but Don Grumpino. He's a little grumpy. He acts like a mobster. Thus, thus we call him Don Grumpino. If you look at the news last night, there were very nervous news last night. Uh, that uh, I think it's more going to be political. I think economy-wise we're good. I think earning-wise we're good. Economy could be better. Earnings are strong. Look at this, so 20% year-to-year on the S&Ps. And it's, it's, it's still, it is still shaping up, but that's the gut feel. Uh, I don't think it's going to be market-wise. I think it's going to be the plan, you know, the, the White House and their plan, their agenda. That's what's going to be at risk. And remember, we're at frothy levels. 2,500 is a major, 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 major octave. I've been saying that for, I don't know, a couple of years. This is a huge number on, on S&P. As we get closer, you just got to be a little bit cautious. I'm not too crazy to be a bull here, okay? I want to be also in the spreads, so I have a downside, some sort of downside protection. I don't want to be in you know, any outrights right now. And I think what may tip us over is what's happening with uh, the Beyond Approach uh, uh, Bob Mueller investigation. And Grumpy is getting really upset, and he's, he's putting his foot in the mouth every day. And the problem is that his knowledge of, uh, first of all, he has no grasp of details. Remember, I'm anti-Clinton. I didn't vote for either of them, but I'm anti-Clinton. He's much better than Clinton, but he has no grasp of legal issues, no grasp of details, and I think our problem, our risk is on the political side. No, it's not the economy. And it's not going to be a Fed. Fed pays to get their hands tied. And I think, by the way, um, there's a pretty good chance that Auntie Jeanette is on her way out. I think I see the hand, handwriting on the wall. You probably saw what the uh, EI, AEI, American Enterprise Institute uh, paper was. Um, this, this just came out. Uh, it's pretty much, and then there's a possible talk that Gary Cohen may take over, uh, go over there from, uh, from Goldman that came to White House. Goldman, White House, Fed. That's a typical run. Um, so I'm not worried about much about the Fed. Uh, the rates are going to go up a little bit on the margin. Uh, it's not going to really impact us because the rates, the absolute value of the rates are too low. That's not going to have the economy. I think our ba basic risk is uh, political. Yeah, you know, constitutional crisis. That could, that could. Especially, if, for example, if he fires Mueller, that's going to be a big problem. What about Sigma channels here? S&P's hit 2476 and a quarter <laughs> yesterday. We buy, we're five points off so, that. How, I, mean, I know. Tell me about it. What, it are is, we, what's, what Sigma are we at? What Sigma are we at in the S&P's? Here? We're at two, completely at two. Two plus. We, we got close yesterday, close to three Sigma. That's very unusual. Okay, we go, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This chart, the market hasn't opened yet. Reset, reset. We're at two, we closed at two sigma yesterday. We cl on on uh, Wednesday, 
which we went flat by, with time and digest, at least for a couple of days, we said. We almost hit three sigma, okay? That's a pullback area. Remember, we've had an incredible run in seven, eight, nine days. From a, we were coming short, hit 50 day, turn around, woof, well up. Now, the day we turned around was not far. I didn't stay out. I did not do anything that day. Why? Because uh, it's a non-farm. You, you just, it's a binary event. And um, so we reversed next day over and it ru- ru- rushed up. So we had a very strong run from the 50 bar, which was uh, just for your marking points. It was uh, 20, 2,400, 2,407 to be exact on the cash. And now uh, yesterday we hit uh, 2,473. Our target's primary was 2470, and a secondary was 2480. For our, you know, we hit right in the center, the sweet spot of it, you know, one and a half points off from 2475. So we took our chips off the table. We have expiration to, to today. Yesterday was a, we felt it was an inside day, and that, it did come in that way. So we'll have to regroup on Monday or Sunday night to see what's next. As far as I'm concerned, our, our short term indicators, I know you. You watch some of that, uh, Joel, uh, um, same way I do. Uh, it's, uh, w- w- for example, our proprietary SP2, which has the limits of sell at 75, buy at 25, is at 84. We're extremely overbought. We need to ease off. Now, will we sell off? No, no. This is, adv- this is a lot has to do with advanced decline of, of certain markets that's like, accumulating. So it looks at that and said we should be at least easing off. Not sell, but lose the upside momentum, okay? And that ease off, and that becomes actually healthy. Maybe we still, and this indicator, it could stay up there. Look, if you go back in February, we, we, we breached the sell zone around 23.11 on the 9th of February. Guess what? We stayed up above that sell side until we hit 2,400, okay? So it could sit there for a while as we go up. It's just that the rate of climb has slowed down. So you've got to be a little bit cautious, a little bit more selective what you pick. Uh, you know, I, I want to see uh, how the earnings come in on the tech side. Google is crucial uh, for advertising in the general economy. I want to see Amazon again. So we have an interesting couple of weeks ahead of us, and then we've got the group. Uh, I, the chances are if we rush, rush up here, August could be about the slowest we, months we have seen. And then Bar- comes the Labor Day. We go back to the game. Barry, how do you approach these option expiration days? Because we know volatility has been so low here. We're joking. You know, it's down 9.5. It's ridiculously low. But sometimes you get a little pickup sometimes on today, on the day right. that these expire. How do you approach these days? Uh, typically, we try to be out the day before or jump over them. Okay? We try to be not get there because what you just said it is a little bit of unknown and so uh, and we don't try also we don't go for the cheapest contract there's a problem sometimes with the cheapest contract because the duration is so small you get expression coming at you you have no room to work it out or repair it so as such especially in the earnings we try to jump over that so for example yes we got two or three names that are going to expire today well these are the legs we repaired there were two legs on, you know, there was a, a caller, long and short of a caller input. We took one side, two gamble on the other side. I understand that. But we're going to let it expire. So that's going to go away. Now, why, how we did that? It was pretty much out of the money, good amount out of the money. So, so that even though there was a, 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 we had to put some margin money up because we were short on one leg, uh, you know, breaking the spread in half, uh, the, the, the amount is very small because it's fairly out of money. Uh, if it is uh, near any money, we've got to keep an eye on it, not forget forget it, and possibly even repair it. That means, how do you repair it? Move it forward. Move it to another week. Move it to two weeks forward. So we try to avoid the expiration part. Uh, the part we want to pay attention to on expiration, believe it or not, is the future side. Now, uh, this is a, 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 a um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, triple witching. It's not quad. Quad is at the end of a quarter. So uh, I, the, the, the futures don't expire, but you could, you could trade them into the open. You could trade them into the open based on the previous, on, on the quad witching, on a, a previous contract. So the, the one that's going to be expiring, 
based on that, and you see how they're going to try to keep the uh, the set, the SET, the settlement value of SPX, because they they go based on all openings. You can play some stuff there. I won't touch volatilities. To it's out of my realm, but I I would trade the futures into it carefully. Um, not today, but four times a year. All when right. we have quad metric. Fari because Hamzi. You, can, you have one expiring one you can trade. Fari Hamzi, founder of Hamzi Analytics. Thanks so much for hopping on today, Fari. Have a good one. Will do. Thanks, Spencer. See you guys. Thanks, Fari. We're leaking here, Dennis. We're down a buck fifty. Sixty-nine fifty is our last print. Down a buck seventy-five. GE under twenty-six dollars. Down eighty-nine wow. cents. Wow. Two point three million shares so have traded. Dennis, buy, sell, or hold GE twenty-six eighty. Twenty twenty-five eighty. Oh, that's, that's what I'm holding it. I mean, I've been, but I've been in it for fifteen years, so I'm not going anywhere on GE. I mean, three point seven two percent yield. I don't think GE is going away. I think that you know, it's sure it's not one of the growth stocks anymore. But I'm in it for the dividend. I'm in it for the cash cow that it is, and I'm sticking with it. So I think the dividend is wow. safe. I disagree with Deutsche Bank. So I'm sticking with it. But you know, that being said, completely out of favor here right now. There's a lot better stocks to be in. Uh, 2585. Uh, that was the previous low of the move. We just hit 2570 here in the pre market and not bouncing above 26 here. So, holding a lot of volume, GE in the red. That's probably what's leading the spoos lower. Dennis, any imbalances this morning? Well, there is, but again, it's option expiration. expiration. They're all buy imbalances, which you know I would expect would flip. They were all sell imbalances 20 minutes ago, so now they're buy imbalances. They're flipping around as new institutions come in. But there's so many big institutions that are going to come in at 928, 929 that you can't even really look at this information. I don't even really want to give them to you okay. because they're they're just not real. Like what they're, they're real, but there's just going to be so influenced by the next institutions that are coming in and it's gonna be a ton of them that come in in the next 40 minutes so right now they're looking like buy imbalances but you know it's weak open it looks like it's gonna be a little bit of a weak open so it looks like you know there's probably gonna be a few sellers that come in here there is some highlights here though just on stocks that are moving here this morning and you know we've had, we've talked about the earning stocks here but there's also the financials are down underwater a little bit we can talk um, oil stocks with oil down a little bit here this morning oil stocks are taking a little bit of a hit i'm trying to really find the silver lining here you know where the money's rotating into i think it's going to be into some of the defensive names like tlt is trading up here this morning we saw at&t and verizon both had really good days yesterday i think they could do it again so you know how i love my two-day move and that was the first day of the two-day move yesterday i would say on at&t and verizon so i think you can see some follow-through there you know that's where i might be looking at trading opportunities if i'm a, a long only trader um you know from the short side it's gonna be a lot of different trades here this morning i'm still somewhat you know amazon is up is only down four or seven points now but you know cautious on that headline from last night i think it spooked the market at least it spooked it initially with amazon falling 20 points but then bouncing all the way back so cautious a little bit on the momos here this morning cautious on the financials because tlt is trading up and i'm looking kind of you know at some of those defensive names like the at&t and verizons that might actually catch a bit all right, uh, let's move into, you talked about a financial, and I cough, uh, Capital One Financial, yep. sprinted up to 86.50. So let's comment on that. Still trading uh, green here in the pre-market by quite a bit. But, uh, Spencer, you got the report on COF. Q2 EPS, a buck 94 versus a buck 90. Sales of 6.7 versus $6.67 billion. So pretty good. Slight beats on both sales and EPS. Uh, for the for Q2, it's been struggling up at 85 bucks. I've been watching this for the entire after hours and pre-market sessions. It's kind of been trading the 84 handle, so it looks like you know maybe that old high 84.48 might come into play. But 85 bucks, big psychological hold number. There'd be some strikes there as well on the option expiration day. I think that's where it's struggling to find bidders. And then you got to remember that the financials are actually a little bit weak here today. So. Capital One, though, with its earnings report, is going to be strong. It's just a matter of whether it starts to leak because some of the other financials are leaking. Yeah, 8650 dollars uh, that year after hours high, congregating at $85. Uh, that's been the high since that initial spurred up. Uh, some overhead supplying this one. I think that 85 really sticks out, and even – Getting a little above uh, 85. Looks like things open up to 86. Uh, one thing I did notice, and uh, Goldman Sachs, boy, boy, this thing took a hit, but uh, 
trying to find some support. That 230 level came into again, uh, came in to action again. Potential double bottom here in Goldman Sachs. And I noticed the financials have, they've kind of rolled over since the earnings here. I see JP Morgan uh, hit 94.51 before earnings, now approaching the $90 level. Bank America found a wall at 25, trying to find support at 24. And uh, let's see another financial city. They rolled over when the Fed got soft. Yeah, they did. They did, and they haven't bounced yet. Yelling comments. She was a little dovish, and they got hit that day. And then we had a couple bounces because of some earnings. But overall, really, since those yelling comments, we've kind of been straight down. You know, we've had some up days in there, but really the trend is down since that. And if you look, some of your defensive names actually started going the other way here, even looking like at your XLU. Look at the XLU in comparison to the XLF. Or in, not, XLF wow. isn't good because it's Berkshire and stuff in there. Sometimes it's not the best thing to look at. But look at the XLU just in comparison to Bank America. Look at the XLU in comparison to Citigroup. Over the course, since those Allen comments, XLU has been straight up. I mean, those comments mean everything to these things when you talk about interest rates. And she got, you know, she went a little devilish with those last comments. And it was after a strong jobs number, too. So everyone was kind of leaning the other way, and then she came in and put the zap on that. Four days in a row, you can see the nice move in the XLU, the corresponding moves, and a similar pro. Well, at and is just getting going, too. Um, and then you also uh, mentioned Verizon. That's trying to get off the map, Yes, too. they finally started going. They were a little late to the party, but the, the party started for them yesterday. All right. So I, I don't mind some of these defensive names. How about Colgate Palmolive? Did we have some earnings on that? That we did. We did. They were on my list, and we meeting. We didn't get around to it, but let me do that right now. Colgate reported Q2 adjusted EPS of 72 cents. That's in line with the estimate sales of 3.83 versus 3.9 billion dollars. So a slight miss on the sales number. As far as uh, looking at the C, what the CEO said on the call as we look ahead, uncertainty in global markets and slowing category wow. growth worldwide remain challenging. 2.2% dividend, it's not a big uh, dividend name, but it's defensive. It kind of fits that mold, you know, on a pullback here. And I'm just looking, you know, you washed out there back in April, just above 70 bucks. I like it in the 70s here. You know, it wasn't play, you know, let's go back to May when the stock went from 72 to 77 because it was rumored as it was in play. Now it's below that price. You know, I like that. Um, I don't mind this one here. Yeah, at 70 bucks, you can see a low just above that. Struggling to fill a gap down to 69. I think you've had a couple different rounds of rumors. So, I don't know. I think maybe hold out for 70 or get all the way down to that gap fill just above 69. But uh, this is a this would be considered a defensive stock and uh, not getting yep. much of a bounce. No, but again, it's defensive, but its yield isn't high. So, you know, when you talk to at and and Verizon, they got 5 6% yield. Some of your utilities, like Southern, are, you know, over 4%, approaching 5% as it gets into the lower 40s. It's sitting down at 2.2. Dividends a little bit, you know. It's, it's not going to trade as much with interest rates as some of the other ones, just because the dividend's a little bit lower. But I would still put it in defensive. I got to ask you guys what, uh, what uh, Mr. Johnson had to say about these solar stocks here the other day. I can see some nice moves in them. Can you give me a quick update on that? Yeah, he well he upgraded uh, a pair of he he upgraded a pair of stocks. He upgraded first solar and upgraded um what was the other one JSO, right? Uh and the, the mostly the comments on on first solar uh was so this this section 201 decision that's coming uh in 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 November but it could be as late as January uh and until that time he expects the stock to run up uh see it's possible upside at around $28 um or I'm sorry $28 or that was that's forget, a pretty good target. For, for, it for, for, forget that number. Forget that number. Canadian solar, he was saying like thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, forget the number. Seven. Forget that number for really? for, for first solar. Yeah. But this, the twenty dollars was was for CSIQ. First solar, though, he does expect uh, to move higher. And same thing uh, with JSO. I think the exact thing he said was, "We don't think it makes sense to be shorting uh, at this point for JSO." He, he's bullish the solar stocks here now, and it's because of this. And I don't know what this you know decision that's coming there, but it can really <laughs> affect it. So whenever this decision is, what's what, what's the decision? He, well, he yeah. said uh, it's at uh, the end of October, October twenty third, but it could be as late as uh, one to three months after that. 
where it, what is where it, it comes what is out. the actual decision it, it's it's a decision on uh, this is confusing it's it's a it's the section 201 its decision on on whether uh, we can will be able to import certain uh, materials for for solar power is my understanding of it um, okay. but I could probably <laughs> use a reference all confusing myself. as hell all you need to know is there's a big decision coming and it's gonna affect these solar companies yeah. so um, all your imbalances that were buy imbalances just flipped to sell. So you actually saw the S&P futures just fall another point there. That was right when they all flipped to sell. So that was what, why your catalyst was in the S&P futures. So for people who believe that the S&P futures always lead, didn't lead right there. I watched imbalance flip and I watched the S&P futures fall point and a half as soon as they flipped, like the same second. All right. Uh, before we wrap things up here, we have uh, Cajun 1 short JKS it's down 2%. Major run up there. Uh, let's see if it can break the low from yesterday, just under 27 bucks. And I think, you know, you got a, something to lean on just above 28. Recent high of the move, 28.18. Yesterday's high, 27.98. So I think sellers be ganging up there at the $28 level. Well, we ran over a minute here. Spencer, do you want to wrap up today's show and preview what's on the docket for next week? I'm, I'm really excited for our Monday show. Uh, we, we, we've got a guest who I've wanted to get on for quite some time. Joel, you reached out and you got him on the show. That's Kenny Pokari, director of NICE Floor Operations for O'Neill Securities. He's also frequently on CNBC. He'll be on the show Monday at 8.35, and I'm looking forward to that one. So I look forward to Kenny Pokari there. On Monday, as far as our show from today, you can watch it again on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com slash TV. You can subscribe to our channel and get notified whenever we go live. You can also catch the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Don't forget, folks, about the Benzinga FinTech Summit in San Francisco on September 28th. If you want to learn more, go to bzsummit.com. Okay, that is it for us this week. Hope you enjoyed uh, four days, uh, four Joel-free days, and then one uh, Joel a day. But we're that's it for us. We're gonna uh, unwind as we head towards the weekend and keep an eye on this market. But have a good uh, rest of your day, folks. Have a good weekend. We'll be back with you, folks, on Monday. Whether you're a short-term swing trader or a long-term investor, you need to check out Thinkorswim, brought to you by TD Ameritrade. There's a reason why Thinkorswim has been named the number one trading platform, because it has it all. With Thinkorswim, you can trade stocks, options, futures, forex, and virtually every other type of order. Get notifications on mobile devices and interact with other traders in chat rooms. You can also use technical indicators and see the latest investing and trading education in Think Money magazine. If you want to keep up with the markets, you need Thinkorswim. To experience everything Thinkorswim has to offer, open a TD Ameritrade account today. Thinkorswim, the online trading platform for traders and investors. TD Ameritrade, member SIPC. All investing involves risks.